Amen. We thank the Lord for being back once again with another opportunity to learn more of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Give an honor to God who is my life, praising and thanking him for Jesus Christ. Praising and thanking him for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, which is our comforter, our guide, and our keeper. And I give honor to you all today. I pray that all is well with you. As you can see, the subject matter is eternal security. How is it eternal? And there's been an ongoing discussion or debate <clears throat> uh, amongst uh, those who are in the body of Christ as to whether or not a person can lose their salvation or uh, not be eternally secure. And for the purposes of this, uh, this message today, I will interchangeably use eternal security, eternal salvation, and eternal life. I don't think anybody will argue that all of those are the same thing. But the question is, and the reason I want to answer this question is how it is that eternal security or eternal salvation or eternal life, how is it that it is eternal will help with the understanding of whether or not a person is actually eternally secure in and of themselves uh, and that there is nothing that they can do to separate themselves from God or if a person can forsake their salvation. And many times when the question is asked, uh, can you lose your salvation? I think that question is a, a leading question because no, you can't lose it. But I believe according to the scriptures that you can turn from your salvation. And we're gonna go through the scriptures today and uh, lay it out. And uh, this is something that has been debated and debated since I can remember. But let's look and see what the scriptures have to say concerning eternal security. All right. I want to start with the text that most people who um, believe in eternal security and say that you cannot lose your salvation uh, or you, you, you cannot turn from it or you cannot ever be separated from God once you come to him. I want to go to some of their scriptures. And, uh, and we're going to go down through here. I want to begin in St. John chapter 5. St. John chapter 5. There are several scriptures. And uh, I won't be able to get to them all, but I believe the point will be made. Matter of fact, I'm quite sure that the point will be made by the time this message is over. St. John chapter 5. And at verse number 24, look what the Lord Jesus says. And many who believe in eternal security that you can never, once you come to God, be separate from God or be separated from God. They, this is one of their proof texts that they believe is a proof text. St. John chapter 5 and at verse number 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. It says, whoever hears his word and believes on him has everlasting life. All right, let's go to St. John chapter 6 and at verse number 37. Look what the Lord Jesus said again. I mean, if Jesus said it, I mean, you can't argue that, right? But the Bible said wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get it. But then he says, with all thy getting, get understanding. And that's what the purpose of this message is today, in any message, is to make sure that the people have proper understanding according to the scriptures, not according to how I feel or what I think, according to the scriptures. 
St. John chapter 6, another proof text. Verse number 37, Jesus says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Verse 38, he says, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Verse 40 says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. That sounds like it's open and shut case, but I'm going to point out some things in these two scriptures that people miss. But before I do that, I want to go one more. St. John chapter 10. And at verse number 27, look what the Lord Jesus Christ said. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 29. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. All right. Now as we'll go ahead and go to Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. And we're going to go get some more understanding. And then we're going to come back and visit each one of these scriptures and show proper understanding because I believe, I believe, certainly believe that a person cannot lose their salvation. That's like, you know, we use the example of losing your car keys or whatever like that. If a person wants to be saved, they'll be saved. The Lord Jesus will keep them. They'll be kept. But if they choose to walk away, then Jesus has not lost them. They left. Many people fail to get that. But we're going to, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Romans chapter 8 and at verse number 35. Look what Paul says. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword. Not, none of these things can separate us from the love of Christ. Verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Then he says, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. He says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. All right. Those are four very popular proof texts that people use who say, see there, you are, once you're saved, once you're Say saved and sanctified, you're eternally secure. You have eternal life and you can never you can never be separated from God. All right. The question was concern, concerning eternal security, how is it that it's eternal? All right. Let's go to St. John chapter 17. And once we go to St. John chapter 17, and I believe I'll go to Romans 6 as well, then we'll go back over these scriptures. St. John 5, St. John 6, St. John 10, and Romans 8. And with better understanding, we can see then how it is that you are eternally secure or what it takes to be eternally secure. St. John chapter 17 and at verse number 1. 
This is the Lord Jesus, and he's praying to God the Father. St. John chapter 17, verse number one said, These words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. And thou, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this, St. John chapter 17, verse number three, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. The point I'm making here to answer the question, how is it that eternal security is eternal? It's not eternal because a person has it eternally. Eternal security, eternal life, or eternal salvation is eternal because the one who gives it is eternal. St. John 17 and 3 says, and this is life eternal. So this is eternal life. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Let's go on to verse 4. He says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. So eternal life is saying, I've done what you told me to do. Jesus Christ is the, this eternal life. And life is eternal because it's him. Security is eternal because it's him. Salvation is eternal because it's him. It's Jesus Christ. And the only way to be eternally secure is to have Jesus Christ. St. John 17 and 3 said, this is life eternal, is that we know the Father and Jesus Christ whom he sent. Many make the mistake of thinking that they are eternally secure, and that means that they eternally have it no matter what. No, eternal security, eternal salvation, or eternal life are only eternal because Jesus Christ is that. He is eternal security. He is eternal salvation. He is eternal life. And if we know him, if we abide in him, if we continue in his word, then we have eternal security as well. You see, we have him. He is. So eternal security is eternal like this. It's Jesus. He's the eternal son of God, the eternal word of God. The one who died and rose again to die never again, to live forevermore. Now, let's keep reading. Look what he says in verse number five, St. John 17 to five. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, he said, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So eternal life, eternal salvation, and eternal security existed before the world was. So it is not eternal because I have it. It's eternal because he is. Because he is the great I am. The I am that I am. That's why it's eternal. That's how it's eternal. And in order for me to have it eternally, I must have him. St. John 17, 3 just said it. That life eternal is that we know the Father and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Now, knowing who eternal security is, let's go back to St. John chapter 5 where we began and get better understanding. Because many people, like I said, think that they, have, they are eternally secure because it's eternal. And if it's eternal, it never comes to an end. And then they'll say, no matter what a person does. But Isaiah 59 said that iniquity and sin separates us from God, you see. But wait, wait, Paul said, neither life nor death nor angel nor principality nor things present nor things to come. I'm going to show you what people miss in all these passages of scripture. And they go on believing a false doctrine and they hurt the witness of Christ. 
because they don't believe that there's any real repercussion many times. They'll say, well, if, if you don't live like you're supposed to live, it's just a loss of rewards. But you're eternally secure. You're eternally saved. You, you have eternal life. And, and if you don't live, you don't live up to the standard of holiness or don't live everything out that the scriptures call for, then you just have a loss of reward. But you make it into the kingdom. But I'm going to show you something different according to the scripture with proper understanding. This is so important. St. John chapter 5, now knowing who eternal life or who eternal security is. St. John chapter 5 and at verse number 24. Eternal security says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth, see, that's a word of continuation. And it denotes not only hearing, but doing. Because James said, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. And we know that the scriptures don't contradict themselves. You see, this is why it's here a little, there a little. This is how we have understanding and the word of God makes itself plain to us concerning those things that are necessary for us to enter into his kingdom. Look what he said, eternal security, eternal salvation, eternal life says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Only those that hear his word and believe, and this means to obey. Because remember, James again says you must be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. So the Lord Jesus Christ is not just talking about a one-time hearing or one-time believing. He's talking about continuing, and I'll prove that to you as well. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. This is only for those that hear his word and believe on the father that sent him. If you don't hear his word, you don't be obedient to his word. You no longer believe on him. Then you will come into condemnation. You see? All right. Let's go to St. John chapter 6. And in verse number 37. St. John chapter 6, verse number 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh. This is another word of continuation. I'm going to prove it with scripture. You must continually come to him. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. And I told you earlier, Jesus will not lose anyone, but those who were with him and who end up not making it into the kingdom is not because Jesus lost them. It's because they turned away. So when people ask me a question, uh, so you believe that you can lose your salvation? I say no, but I believe a person can can turn from their salvation. You see, that's what I believe. Wonderful Savior. They can reject it. And this is the Father's will, verse 39, St. John 6 and 39, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son, of, son, the son and believeth. This is to continually believe. And we know that believe to believe for a saint is to obey. Otherwise, it's the belief of a devil because the devils believe and tremble. So we know that our belief is not like the belief of a devil. The belief of a devil is just a head knowledge. I believe I know. Hmm? But the belief of a saint is a belief that's from the heart, which shows forth in obedience 
This is why in Hebrews 3, the Lord talks about an example that was for us. When the children of Israel did not make it into the promised land the first time they went there, he said they didn't enter in because of unbelief. And that word literally means disobedience. To believe means to obey. There's a message on this channel where I says, uh, where it's, it's entitled, uh, faith, trust, and belief are all synonymous. They mean to obey. You can't say that you trust in God and not obey him. You can't say that you have faith in God and not obey him. You cannot say that you believe in God and not obey him. So when we see this word believe, this is talking about something that is manifest, manifested in obedience to him. Those are the ones that are eternally secure. Those are the ones that have eternal life. St. John 6 and in verse 40, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. St. John chapter 10. And at verse number 27, oh, bless the name of the Lord. St. John chapter 10, and at verse number 27, St. John 10 and 27 says, My sheep hear my voice. Who are we talking about to hear his voice? His sheep. So we're talking about sheep. I had a discussion with a man the other day, and, uh, he asked me, he said, so are you saying that sheep can turn and be goats? And I said, yes. If a goat can hear the word of God and become sheep of his pasture, they can certainly turn back. And I can show you that. And I believe it's first Peter chapter two. Well, bless his name. St. John chapter 10, verse number 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So sheep are the ones that follow him. They obey him. They, they, they submit to him as Lord. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Hmm? This is for the sheep. Verse 29. My father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Why is no one able to pluck them out of the father's hand? Because they are sheep that obey. And no one can take you from the father if you are truly wanting to be with him. But you yourself have free will. And if you decide to turn from the father, you can do it. All right. Verse 30 says, I and my father are one. Now, Romans 8. Knowing who eternal life is, we now know that. That it is Jesus Christ. And security, salvation, and life are eternal because Jesus is eternal. Not because we necessarily eternally have it. The only way we can have eternal life is to remain sheep of his pasture. Continue to believe in him. Continually obey him. Stay faithful to him. This is why Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. And because of those things, including the keeping of the faith, there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me. But if you don't keep the faith, you don't have it even though you may have once had eternal life. But if you don't continue in the faith, you don't continue in obedience, you don't continue believing, continue trusting, you see, that's how you have eternal life. Or that's how you have the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Romans 8, and at 35, verse 35, I'm going to show you what they miss over here. I've shown you that it's the ones who believe. It's the sheep that he's talking to. Romans 8, at verse 35, who shall separate us? Listen to Paul. 
He said, who shall separate us? The us are the saints. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, Paul says, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any key word, other creature. We're all creatures. And who shall separate us, these creatures who are in Christ, from the love of Christ? No one. No height, nor depth, uh, uh, no, no, no life, nor, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature that's other than me. But many run over here to Romans 8 and they say, see there, nothing can separate you. Nothing outside of yourself, nor any other other creature shall be able to separate us. So Paul including himself in the us and saying up concerning us, no other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We got to continue or we separate ourselves. So no, we don't lose security. We don't lose salvation. We don't lose it. We forsake it by doing what? Not continuing in his word. Not continually coming to him. Not continually believing in him. Not being faithful. The Bible said without faith in the Hebrews 11, it is impossible to please God. So I must keep the faith. Ephesians 2. 89 says that we are saved by grace through faith. And it is the gift of God, right? Hmm? It's the gift of God, that salvation, this eternal salvation. It's the gift of God, but how? Through faith, you see? So in order for me to keep that saving grace or that grace that has saved me, I must keep the faith. Because I cannot get the grace without the faith. Um, Romans 6, real quick. Romans 6 and 23. Look what the scripture says. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if the gift of God is eternal life and is through Jesus Christ, I must stay in Christ in order to have eternal life. If I step foot out of Christ, if I forsake Christ, if I become unfaithful to Christ, I have forsaken eternal life. Wonderful Savior. Look at St. John chapter 8. Bless the name of the Lord. I hope it's being made plain. It's something I've, you know, understood for a while now. And I see how people miss it. They go to Romans 8. They say, well, see, no one can ever pluck him, pluck us out of his hand. Right. No one can. Like Romans 8 said, nothing can separate us, nothing outside of us, nor any other creature. We're all creatures, created beings, you see? And no other creature can separate me, but I can separate myself. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Look at St. John chapter 8, and in verse 31, look what Jesus said. Remember I said, you gotta continue? 
Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. And remember, it says he that believeth. You got to believe or continually believe. He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. He that believeth on me hath eternal life and shall not come into condemnation. You see, you got to continue. St. John 8 and 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You must continue, the Lord Jesus says, in him to be his disciple. Not just, he said they believed. The Jews believed, they believed, and then he said to them, if you continue. That's for all of mankind. If we continue, then no one can pluck us out of his hand. If we continue, he will in no wise cast us out. If we continue, neither death, nor life, nor peril, nor slower, nor, nor, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature will separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. You see, this is proper understanding. We have eternal security because Jesus Christ is eternal. It's not eternal security because we have it eternally. We must continue. Here's a good question here for those that believe in eternal security. I'm going to just take you to it. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Wonderful Savior. And uh, we're going to look at verse number. He's talking to the angel or the pastor of the church in Sardis. We see that in Revelation 3 and 1. Let's just start. Revelation 3 and 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. He says, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Then he says, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Then he says, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Look at verse 5. Lord Jesus said this now. He that overcometh. Remember, I was talking about we got to keep the faith. We got to continue in his word. We got to believe on him continuously. We got to keep coming to him. You see? Revelation 3 and 5. He that overcometh the same, the one that overcome, shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He said the one that overcome won't have their names blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. If the eternal security, the way many understand it today, you can never be separate from God once you come to him. If that's the case, why is Jesus even mentioning anything about blotting names out of the book of life? Because if you're eternally secure, just because you eternally have it, and your name, when you're saved, is put into the Lamb's book of life. Then it would never come out. The Lord Jesus Christ wouldn't even mention anything about blotting a name out of the book of life. There would be no need of mentioning it. Because once it goes into the book of life, it stays there. But Jesus puts a condition on it. He said, the one that overcome, I will not blot, out, blot his name out of the Lamb's book of life. You see? 
Now let's see how is it that we overcome. First John chapter five. For all thy getting, get understanding. Bless the name of the Lord. First John chapter five and verse number one. Bless the name of the Lord. And we're going to work our way down and see how it is that we overcome. First John chapter five, verse number one says, whosoever believeth, there's that word of continuation again, not just believe, because in St. John 8, 31, Jesus told those Jews that believed, if you continue in my word, you see. First John chapter five, verse number one, whosoever believeth, that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone that loveth see see this continual and what did Jesus say loving him was keeping his commandment he said if you love me you keep my commandments whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him by this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. See this emphasis that the Lord is putting on keeping his commandments. Verse 4. For whatsoever or whosoever is born of God overcometh the world remember what Jesus said in, in Revelation 3 and 5 to him that overcometh will be clothed in white white raiment then he says and I will not blot his name out of the book of life letting us know that those who do not overcome will have their names removed or blotted out of the Lamb's book of life verse 4 says 1 John 5 and 4 for whatsoever or whosoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith hmm so it is the keeping of the faith being faithful being obedient continuing in his word that's how we overcome and when we do that, our name will remain in the book of life. We will have eternal salvation. We will stay eternally secure as long as we obey. <laughs> Hebrews 5 and 9. Bless the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. We just want proper understanding, that's all. And when we have proper understanding, then we can wage proper warfare. We can be good soldiers, you see. But if we don't have proper understanding, and there, there are those that are truly sincere, that believe in eternal security, that there's no way, nothing that they do can separate them from God. They're eternally saved, and that's that on that, no matter what they do, you know. And they live clean lives. But there are also those who will say, well, you know, we all sin every day. Or they'll say that they are sinners saved by grace. You can't be both. If you're saved by grace, you're no longer a sinner. You're a saint. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if any man be in Christ, we move from darkness into light. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Then it says, old things are passed away. So if I go from being a sinner to now being a saint in Christ, I'm a new creation in Christ, I'm a saint, old things are passed away, I'm no longer a sinner. All things are passed away. And then he says, and behold, all things have become new. You see, who oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hebrews chapter five. And at verse 
Number nine. It says, and being made perfect. This is talking about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ because we know the Lord Jesus Christ was perfect, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God, but his body was in the likeness of sinful flesh. You see, his body wasn't perfect. Why? Because his body could die. His body could be tempted in all points in like manner as we are. The Bible says he came in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. You see? So he had to come and be just like us. The Bible says he was made like unto his brethren. You see? Our bodies are imperfect as well. We're looking for that perfect body, that resurrected body. So at Jesus' resurrection, he gets that perfect body. Look what it says, verse 9, Hebrews 5 and 9, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation, eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. If you don't obey him, you don't have eternal salvation. If you don't obey him, you're not eternally secure. He is eternal security. He is eternal salvation. He is eternal life, and you must obey him in order to have it or in order to have him. You see? Now it says that he may, being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. We only can have eternal life because Jesus Christ got up from the grave. If Jesus Christ did not get up from the grave, then we have no hope. Paul lets us know this. That if in this life only we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. But because Christ rose, you see, and became the first fruit unto God, you see, and that we should be a kind of first fruit, meaning we can also have eternal life. We can also get up from the grave, even though we have an appointment with death. So because he got up, he is now the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Wonderful Savior. And that is why those who obey him, those who continue in his word, those who continually believe on him, those who keep coming to him, those who are the sheep of his pasture, that's why no one can pluck them out of his hand. That's why he will no wise cast them out because they continue in him. They abide in him and he in them, you see? This is why death or life or principality or things present or things, things to come and none of these things can separate them nor any other creature can separate them from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus because they are the sheep of his pasture because they continue in his word because they keep believing on him because they keep the faith they stay obedient they live everything that they know of the word of God bless the name of the Lord I want to look at Colossians wonderful savior Wonderful Savior. Colossians chapter 1 and at verse number 21. There's a message on this channel called If is a Heavy Word. You see? If. That's a, a word of contingency. If you do, you get one thing. If you don't, you don't get it and you get another. You see? Colossians chapter 1, verse number 21. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Meaning we did, we did the thing that the son of man did. We were alienated and enemies of God, right? And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. See, Jesus reconciled us back into the Father, right? 
in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight if ye continue in the faith so if we don't continue in the faith he will not present us holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight he won't do it but he will do it verse 23 if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof I Paul am made a minister bless the name of the Lord a couple of more passages of scripture I want to look at and uh, let me see Bless the name of the Lord. Romans 11. And in verse number 21. Talking about the natural branches and the branches that are grafted in. Natural branches, of course, uh, that's Israel. The ones that are grafted in are those who are Gentiles. The salvation is for all. Right? And so... For those who say that you cannot, um, I don't like lose salvation. If you cannot forsake your salvation, you cannot be separated from God in any way, shape, or form. I've already, I believe, proven that you can separate yourself. In Romans 8, it says, nor any other creature. In St. John 5, 6, and 10, I'm showing that it's the ones who believe and continually believe those who keep coming to him those who are the sheep of his pasture those are the ones that are not plucked out of the hand of God you see those are the ones that are no way cast out those who continue we just saw in Colossians chapter 1 that we'll be presented holy and unblameable and unreprovable if we continue in the faith you see that's how you keep a hold on it, lay hold on eternal life, you see? That's how you do it, wonderful Savior. It's not a works-based salvation. The Bible lets us know that in Ephesians 2 and... Uh, let's look at Ephesians 2 real quick. And we're going to come back to Romans 11. Because so many times when I teach this or if I talk to somebody about it, they'll say that uh, I'm teaching a works-based salvation. No. The Bible lets us know that we are once we are in Christ, we are to do good works and those good works are following a true salvation uh, by grace through faith. Ephesians chapter 2 and in verse number 8 says, For by grace are ye saved. Through faith, remember you got to keep the faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Most people stop right there. They don't go on to verse number 10. Verse number 10 says, for we are his workmanship. See, he has done a work in us now. We are new, created new in Christ, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works meaning we're created to do good works which God hath before ordained or appointed that we should walk in them so no I'm not teaching a works based salvation you're saved by grace through faith but that saving grace will always fo be followed by works that are done by the according to the will of God because he created us to do them you see James said faith without works is dead if there are no works then there is no true faith there and if there's no true faith there there's no saving grace you cannot get saving grace through a dead faith wonderful savior 
or dead faith is proof that there is no saving grace. The lack of works. Now, a person can do good works and not be saved. So don't mistake me on that one. But there's no way a person is going to be saved by the grace of God and not do good works. No way. But there can be someone doing good things, you know, feeding the homeless, whatever, whatever, whatever. All that stuff is just, but if it's not backed up by salvation, then it's no good in the sight of God. Because God said man's righteousness is as filthy rags. It's got to be done, done in Christ, you see. you got to be in Christ and let the Lord work this thing in you. And you work it out. Wonderful Savior. Oh, bless his name. All right. Romans 11. And I think maybe I'll be done. I think there was one other scripture. Maybe I can get to it. Romans 11, at verse number 21. He said, For God spared not the natural branches, meaning Israel. He's talking to the, the Gentiles. Take heed to the Gentiles, lest he also spare not thee. You're in Christ. You see? Take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail severity, but toward thee goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, he says what? Otherwise thou, shalt, thou also shalt be cut off. So he's telling these Gentiles, he's saying you've been grafted in. Israel rejected God. And now this thing is opened up to, to the Gentiles. And they've come in and received this salvation. And he says what? To the Gentiles. He says, verse 22, Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fail severity, but toward thee goodness if thou continue in his goodness otherwise thou also shall be cut off the Lord said he'll cut off folks who are already in him if they don't continue in his goodness what more do we need y'all last passage of scripture see no other creature can separate you from God but you can separate yourself Eternal security is remaining in the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the one who is eternal. I want to go to 1 Peter chapter 2. And uh, was it 1? Let me see here. I want to make sure I got it right. Wonderful Savior. Let's see. Might be second Peter what I'm looking for. Yeah, I think it is. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter two. And look what the Lord is saying here through the Apostle Peter. He's talking about uh, false prophets. And he says, let's pick up in verse uh, verse, verse 12. 2 Peter 2 and 12. He said, but these as natural brute beasts, meaning those who are not governed by the Spirit of God, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the day, daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and they cannot cease from sin, beguiling or deceiving unstable souls. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray. So they were on the right way and they forsook it. You don't lose your salvation. 
you forsake it if you do anything. And if you are a sheep of his pasture, you got a mind made up, you will never turn from him. You'll continue in his word, like he said, and be his disciple indeed. Which have forsaken the right way, verse 15, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, going after the money. The son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. Clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is revert, reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in, in bondage. Look what he says in verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, so they've been saved. They've escaped the pollutions of the world by what? By the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What did Jesus say in St. John 17 and 3? This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. That is eternal life. These people have eternal life over here. They have Jesus Christ, right? Verse number 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known. They knew it. But it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. I believe I made the point with scripture. Of course, you know, people will believe what they want to believe, but the word of God is not going to change. Your eternal salvation, your eternal life, your eternal security is in Jesus Christ. And in order for you to lay hold on it and have eternal security, you must remain in the Lord Jesus Christ. No one can take you out of his hand. No one can snatch you out of his will. If you continue in his word, if you are sheep of his pasture, if you continue to believe on him, if you continue in the faith and obedience of him, you are eternally secure. But if you ever turn from him or forsake him, you have forsaken your eternal life. You have forsaken your salvation and you are forsaking your eternal security because your eternal security, your eternal salvation and your eternal life is all wrapped up in Jesus Christ. And if you want to have those things, you've got to have him in order to have him. You must be faithful and obedient. Hebrews five and nine being made perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. He said in Revelation 3 and 5 that those that overcome will not have their names blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. Meaning that those who do not overcome will. And he told us in 1 John 5 and 4 that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. It is no wonder the Apostle Paul told, told Timothy, he said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. He said, but not for me only, but for all those that love his appearing. God bless you. I pray this was a blessing to you. And I pray that uh, I made it plain and uh, understandable. Um, I just want you to have proper understanding. The Lord said, with all thy getting, get understanding. And this way we can truly, truly walk in the power and the, uh, and the righteousness and holiness of our almighty God. 
But God bless you. Pray this was a blessing to you. And until next time, y'all, keep the faith.